Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man Bad Chad and Queen Jolene's on the camera and we are on air. We're in the new shop right now because Doug's working on this Underbird. I just want to get over here for a minute and apologize for yesterday um, of my behavior and anything I say right now. Um, it's my fault. I did wrong. Uh, I want to apologize to Jolene and I want to apologize to Doug for dragging them into my situation. Uh, Jolene knew better. She did not want to play the tape. Um, Doug knew better. Um, I drug him into it. I got him to help me uh, do what I did. <clears throat> In the end, uh, I felt like I was being done wrong and uh, I retaliated and it was not the right thing. Uh, when we put the video up, that was me um, being a bad person. Um, I was thinking that I was justifying what I did by doing what I did. And anybody that got, wa got to watch the video, um, I was not, I hope, I hope way back in your brain that you know uh, that I was not intending to um, keep or whatever, keep, steal, whatever what I had done I was trying to prove a point um, to him um, how I felt about what he was doing to me uh, and what I did was totally wrong uh, just like in, in doing the body work and working on the cars um, when you make a mistake then you go back and you fix it so um, after I did that, I directly took it back because I knew that I had done wrong. Uh, I messaged him. Um, I messaged him. I told him that I had it. I messaged him and told him that I was bringing it back. And uh, from there on in, that's the end of it. We, uh, we made it home. Um, I, I don't know what's going on from there. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it uh, because I, I don't want to waste any more time on it. I, I, don't, I don't feel like um, me stewing about something that, uh, that I feel is wrong um, is going to do anything or help anything. Me getting Jolene to post the video is, was, I guess, basically... Um, trying to prove a point to him that um, you can do it to me, I can do it to you. But we all know that I was wrong. And, and, and that's why um, it got taken down is because I did wrong. There's, there's no sense showing it when it was a mistake and there's nothing to promote there other than the wrong thing to do and that's not what we want to do. Uh, we try to learn from our mistakes. Today, I am feeling about that big and, and it is what it is so yeah like I think that I've disappointed a lot of people on our YouTube station just want to apologize for for being a being a bad person <clears throat> that's basically about it I want to apologize to Jolene again for um, getting her to do what I asked, getting Doug to help me. Um, yeah, so basically I'm just going to um, say that's it. So we have got no stuff with it yet. And it does not matter. I can, and, you know, I guess to me, and, it would, to me, in my brain, and it's wrong, what I'm telling you, I'm not making excuses, like, when you make a deal, I guess that, I, I feel like you would live up to it. And, and if a person doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're allowed to do something to them. It does not mean that. It just means that um, that deal has not come through, and basically you have to live with it. And uh, over the years, I probably wasn't 
No, I was not very good at that. Uh, I was talking to Doug this morning. He said, uh, you know, you was pretty kicky punchy when you were a young person or younger. And I was. And I still have a little fire in me. But uh, I'm happy that I did not result to violence. I just went the wrong way again. I, I thought that if I did what I did, that um, it would change things, and it did not. All it did was make me look bad. It's almost like if you see two people um, down the road and, and one screaming at the other one, um, you automatically think the one that's screaming is a bad person, <laughs> basically. And uh, for me to retaliate and show you uh, the real me, it wasn't the best to do that. It's not what I promote. So basically the next time, <clears throat> I'm just gonna have to move on. You know what I mean? Like there's all kinds of things in life that people don't like and that happen and uh, just move on. For, for me to, basically what I was thinking, to go to the authorities and say, well, he owes me this or he owes me that. I, I basically think that um, he wouldn't answer the door like he wouldn't answer it for me, <laughs> basically. And um, to fight over that and think about that full time um, just seemed like a lot of nuisance. And uh, I thought I was going to fix the situation real quick. And all I did is make myself look bad. So, I've taken it back. Um, I haven't got any stuff with the car for the car yet. It does not matter. Um, in my brain, I just uh, gonna let it go. And I want to apologize to all you people that really care about what we're doing here. Because I did wrong. And um, I was showing you the truth. I, I didn't want you to think that I'm somebody that I'm not just like when I do the body work and just like when I weld things up and when I, you know, do things, I want to show you the truth. And I, I showed you the truth, um, how I act sometimes. And uh, it's not the best. So if you can look at me and, and you know, uh, realize that I'm only human and you know, just kind of, you know, stick with me. We'll continue on staying in the garage and, you know, keep working. And, and, and I've said it many a times, when I'm in the garage, I'm not hurting nobody or making a fuss with nobody, you know. And I really feel like, for me, staying in the garage sometimes is the best thing to do. And, you know, there's a lot of things out there that can... Um, make you not feel, or, you know, um, there's a lot of things out there that can, can change how you are dealing with certain things in life. And um, I guess I just showed you that I'm not the best at dealing with some things in life. Uh, but I will say one thing, uh, we did take it back and I was not planning on keeping it by no means. By no means. I would not film it and show it and call him and tell him if I was. I basically was in my small little brain at the point in time trying to prove a point. And uh, all I did is make myself look bad. So I'm going to get back to fixing cars and forget or try to forget um, what I did, but I'm going to take the lesson. I'm going to take the lesson. Basically. Uh, that's not going to happen again. I'm just going to um, cut my losses and, and go the other way. Um, not, I'm not into uh, going to the authorities and saying this or that. I generally um, that's probably my biggest mistake 
is I generally try to deal with it myself. So probably will uh, just stay in the shop and try to get some work done, basically, um, and try to uh, never do that again. Yeah. So one more time, I want to apologize and I take full credit for doing wrong. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to apologize to Jolene again. She did not want to post a video. I said, go for it. Doug um, got roped into because I asked him to help me. Uh, and that's the end of it. They're not the, the people here that should be looked down on. It should be me because I am the one um, that orchestrated it. I'm the one who done it. And I am taking full credit for it. So thanks for coming back. And if you can uh, look past that hiccup, we can move on and I can get back to doing what I should be doing and uh, we can make some good content and hopefully show you the truth and the live without doing wrong. You want to go over and check out the car? So we're going to go over and check out the car. I picked up a lot of stuff yesterday for uh, Jolene's Bugatti. Uh, we got a little list that we picked up to get a lot of things done. Uh, we got a little, some clamps, some, some hoses, uh, some fan belts, and that sort of stuff uh, to try to get things rocking and rolling. We got a transmission cooler. Uh, we've got a, quite a few things. All right, let's go over and see Doug for a minute. Oh. It's a beautiful day here in Nova Scotia. Sometimes it's hard to, uh, it is hard, I don't know whether you know it or not, if you've ever sat down and, and told, sat down and told somebody that you're abso absolutely wrong and that you apologize, I don't know if you've ever done that before, but it's not the, the best feeling. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. Doug. Doug's down on the ground, he's sanding, um, getting everything ready for primer, because that's what we want to do. In case I spray any primer anywhere, is everything sanded, everything's going to be changed color and that sort of stuff. I've got the hood going on right now as I'm trying to make this front uh, hood gap a lot better. We've got the gap going all the way around the, the sides looking good, but the gap in the front was quite big. So what I've done is I've put a little fiberglass on the edge of this part. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sanding them together uh, to make it fit good. So we've got, we took in the gap from that big and now we've got it this big and it's hard to believe it's still it still opens up. We're going good there. Aiden was in uh, yesterday, the day before, uh, yeah, a couple days ago actually, and we were sanding the trunk lid on it. What has happened on the trunk lid? Uh, there was some the lips on the lips. Jolene's got nice lips. Um, the lip on the trunk lid was not that great. It was a bit jagged and that sort of stuff. And what I did is I took the zip cut and I cut it off and, and beat it together and got that rust out of there. And then, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you something. So, what happened is, we took some fiberglass and fiberglass right over top of the lip. Made it disappear. Put some fiberglass on it and got it disappear. And then we took and put some body fill on it and it was still disappeared. The line was, the, the lip was not there. Then what I did is I came in with a marker and we drew our line back on with the marker all the way around because we wanted the lip back. So once uh, he had the filler on there, had the fiberglass and fiber and the fiberglass and the filler on there, then we took a saw blade and we, with the line, we followed the line and we cut the line back in the filler and the fiberglass. So now what's going on, you can see the ocean floor, the ocean floor is the metal. What I did then is I took, or he did, he took the saw blade and cut a line in the filler and all the way around. So now it looks, or will look like, um, we have a lip around the panel. So everything is fixed and look right um, with fiberglass and filler fixing the lip. So now when we take and prime the 
trunk lid. You'll see that lip in there. You'll see that cut. And then when we seam seal it, seam sealers after you, this is uh, what it looks like with no seam sealer. And what happens is if you do not seam seal, you can see we're sanding it there quite heavy, trying to get that cleaned up a little bit. You can see what happens. If you, do, if you prime paint and do not seam seal, generally the metal that's laid over top of this piece, rust can climb out, out on this piece. So what happens is, is you, prime, you prime it, you seam seal it. Seam sealer is an automotive sealer. You come along with a sealer and you go along that lip so you can seal that off so it doesn't, so the rust does not creep out again. Because there's, if I peeled that up, there's rust underneath that, guaranteed. Um, but to peel the panel off and try to get that rusted, it just really, that would be quite something else for somebody to do that. Um, that would be over the top and not necessary. So we're going to prime it. When we rub our seam sealer on top of that, this panel right here is going to look exactly like that. It's going to have that cut in it. So where the seam sealer lays in it, it, lo it will look like that. So now what, what I'm saying, what's going on here is when, when you open the trunk lid, if you were going to buy that car, basically, generally, basically and generally, most times you go around to a car and looking at it, you're looking for, or I look for, I look for the lip. And there's the lip. You can see the lip there going there all the way around. And you would look for the lip all the way down around right to the front. You would look for that lip. It's kind of hard to see right now where um, Doug's got the hickey huppies. You can see where uh, the lip is on there all the way along. You would look for that to see if your door has been fixed or not. You also would look down, down the edge to see how thick the door is. And that way there you would know if there's any filler in the door. You know, if you're looking to buy something, that's what you would go for. Um, filler's not a bad thing, but you, you would know that it has been repaired because you cannot tell if a car has been repaired by looking at the outside of it. Um, but there's telltale signs if you look on the inside of it. You know, if the lip was too, you know, if you get a big lip on the bottom of your door like that, um, you basically know someone has put a piece over top of there and did not cut that lip off and make it look right. If you have no, if you cannot see the lip on there, you know that someone's put filler over top of that and they did not that it's been fixed. That's basically what you know. So what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is when you open this trunk lid and we put seam sealer all the way around there, you're going to think that it's never been fixed. And that there um, is the body man's uh, job, is to make it look like it's never been fixed. If we go over um, when we go to the to the hood, I have a lip that I put in there all the way underneath that hood. If you when you open the hood up, you cannot see the lip on that hood. You know it's automatically been fixed, and it's just a telltale sign whether you've got a good car or not. If we go over this side, here to sec Doug, if you don't mind. Now, if we look at this door here. Just going to shut this a little bit further. If you look, if you look at, see how, see how thin the door is here. See how thick it is there. Now, what do you know? You know that the door has been fixed, and it does not bother me that it's fixed, and it does not bother me that it's that thickness. Does not bother me. Um, does not bother me. But what I'm saying is. That's how you know certain things, or that's how you figure things out. So that's what we did over there with this, to make sure when you look underneath the bottom of the door, you see a lip with seam sealer. Also, when you see the filler that we seen down on the bottom of the door, um, what I'm thinking is when you make things fit right, like I'm trying to make this, I'm trying to get this hood to fit right. What I'm doing is I'm putting filler on this, putting filler on this, and then I'm blocking them together, okay? So what I want is, I don't want the, the hood to be that thick of fill. 
I do not want that because if someone looked at the edge of the hood, you would know that it had a bunch of fill on it. Don't want that. Where we have adjusted it, it's up just as high as it can go. We're like, we're just as, like we can't go, um, what can I say? If, if I adjust this down lower, the, the hood down lower, that means to block it together, I have to have more filler on the hood. If I bring the hood up to the highest point, like the hood is, you know, just at the top of the fender, that means that I can put, that means the hood is up as far as it can get, and that means that when I go to block them together, I have less hood than I have on this piece. That makes sense. Basically the same thing with the door. If I adjust the door, so the door is out, and I want to fill it together to make things perfect along there, like, you know, uh, there's a lot of cars that look really nice down the sides, and the ones that look extra special and are straight from there all the way to there, the filler that makes them look straight, they generally would put it on the quarter panel. So you adjust your door out as far as you can get it, and then you fill it. So you put a little fill on this side, fill on this side, and you want the filler on this piece, not the edge of the door. So that's basically what I've got going on here right at the present moment. I've got the hood up as, just as high as I can get it without making it look bad. I mean, there's a, like a little bit there, but I'm trying to put less filler on the hood than the front piece. Front piece, you can't tell. The hood, when you open up, you can see the lip. That's, that's what's going on there. Um, Doug is sanding it down right now with a 220. Uh, and the reason being the 220, if we're going to prime this thing, uh, I looked at this car and I thought it was primed, but it's not. It's just a, an epoxy or a sealer on there. It's not very thick. There's no build. Um, you can see where it's we've worn through on the edges. So it's, it's really thin. But in order to apply any primer to it uh, for the roof and the back, and, and anything like that. I don't think we need a bunch of primer on here, but we need to prime the hood. Uh, we need to prime the quarter panels. We've got some dents on there. You can see uh, there's still the yellow paint underneath there. There's still a little bit of body work that had to be done, or has to be done. We got a dent, a dent. Uh, we got a couple of little dent going on there, so that stuff has to be fixed. Um, but we want to sand it all to make something stick. So we've got underneath the hood to do. Doug is sanding that stuff. I am blocking the hood. Um, if, if you can forgive me for my mistakes, which I hope that you can, um, I'm only human and I'm trying to uh, not be bad Chad, but yet bad Chad, if you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, we're gonna probably get some primer on this bad boy tomorrow, would be, which would be a great thing. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So right now, uh, on this hood, I can show you what I'm going to do on this hood right now. Where I have the hood filled out this way and this way, I make sure, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I sand off this part of the hood completely. Right to the metal. I don't, I don't want no filler on this side whatsoever. So we don't want no filler on the edge of the hood. We want that all metal there. And then we can do this. You get a nice... I can take and... Um, I probably should buzz it off. Can I get, buzz that off? Get time for that? Let's buzz that off and make a, make a perfect line. I don't say perfect line, but 
don't know if there's anything perfect, but where's my DA? I'm gonna turn the air on. Okay, I gotta turn the air on. Just bear with me. The air's already on. Scratch, scratch, scratch. <clears throat> So I like using this eight inch, or yeah, it's the eight inch. I got 40 grit on it. Uh, it's probably worn down a little bit, but that doesn't matter. It's just a little bit of thin filler here. I'm gonna buff this off. I'm gonna buff it off together. Hoods adjust it where it needs to be adjusted. So when I sand this one and this one together, you know that it's gonna fit. When you have like this, if you look down here, you can see a little bit there if you're going for you know if you're going for that absolute a1 perfect fit um, that that there has to be dealt with and that's in the right spot to deal with it and I'll say why because the filler would have to go on this side instead of the door when we look down here this is not bad kind of tucks in and kind of tucks in on the fender but you see down here look at look at the door hanging out so, you, how, do, how do you, where, the, where this is fitting nice here, um, it's oh high here, it's oh high here, how do you, how do you fix this part? I'm, I'm going to try to, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to sand out of here what I, what I think there might be some filler there, I'm going to try to sand it what I can, and then I'm going to, I don't know, I'm thinking that I'm going to have to, uh, to get this to fit right, is put, is filler on this side to make that door fit right along here around the sill. It probably had sills put on it. I think it has. So I'd have to filler, put some filler on this side. If I push this in to fit this, and then this goes way in, when I, when I put my door on, then I've got my door way in, and this is way out. And if I want to fix the door, that means I'd have to put filler on the door to get it out to that. So basically, um, I'll say, take off what I can here. I might even bang it with a hammer a little bit, try to get that in there a little bit. But in all honesty, to take that in, to fix this, ruins this. And to fix this, I had to put filler on this where you would never know. To fix this, if I shove that in and put that, put that in and, and put this in, that means I have to put filler on the door because the door would be in too far and you would know because it'd be thick. So I'd rather have it out than in. Up here, the filler needs to go on this part of the fender instead of the door, which is a good thing. On the back, it does not look bad on the back. Now, there's a little bit that needs to come up a little bit. We'll, we'll play with a little bit more. Get rid of this gap here. It needs to come up some. You can see here it's down a little bit. We don't want that because if you were going to have that line blocked, your filler would go on the door. Don't want that. You want the door up as high as it can get so the filler goes on that side. I keep explaining that. I hope you get it. People explain things to me all the time, and I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. You don't get it either, Doug? I don't get it, no. You know, Jolene was explaining to me this morning how I was wrong, and I did get it. <laughs> Sorry, baby. sanding down here right now because it's not hitting that edge. So I might as well take it off, take all the filler I can off there to get down to that edge.
using this just like I would a block, back and forth, crisscrossing it, and all that sort of stuff to get where I'm going. You can see where I'm down to the glass. I put glass on there first. I want something strong on there because I'm building that edge up to fit the edge of that hood. So the hood's up as high as it can. This was low, so I glassed it, filled it. Now I'm bringing it together. Glass, that's where I did the hood. Had a little glass on it. Might even be a little metal there. You can see right here, I'm on the metal. Can't go any further than the metal. There's no sense me keep sanding, 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 sanding. That needs a little more filler there um, because there's metal right there. If I if I want it to fit um, perfectly together, there's no there's no sense me sanding there anymore. Get on with it and get some results. I've got metal showing right here on the hood, so we know we're down we're down right to the basics of the lip of the hood so that should be nice and thin along there and it's fitting nice we're, we're going this way we're sanding together it should fit good So this old bird's getting pretty close, not this old bird, this old bird's getting pretty close to, um, you know, getting primer and uh, maybe getting some paint underneath the trunk lid and underneath the, the hood and inside the doors and some lips and stuff like that. But the engine and the transmission are still needing to go in this thing, so there is some fabrication that has to go on to get that in there. Uh, so we will be doing a little bit of paint and a little bit of prime and that sort of stuff, but we will not paint the car until we make sure that we do the motor and transmission are inside the engine bay hooked up and that sort of stuff. Uh, I would never want to paint it before that is done, but uh, that's where it's at.
metal showing, we're at the end. You can keep going if you see the metal, you, you can, but you're going to end up um, filling it again if you want it right. So I'll show you now just quickly. <clears throat> I can hand sand that. Do you want to hand sand that? Or get time? Yeah, I've got that fitting together really good. Got lots of pinholes. Must not have been fixing, mixing my fill that well. Uh, let's do this. If I want, now all of the fill is off the edge of the hood. For me to get a really nice line, what I like to do is I like to put tape like that. Then I can sand back to my tape and I know I have a perfect line. Instead of me just sanding it and shoving sandpaper in it and all that looks good, looks good, and all of a sudden you wear it back too far, then it's back into the filler again. If I take and put the tape on, then I can actually give myself the line that I exactly want. Um, and then that matters whether you get your tape straight or not whether you get the line that you want. So, uh, it matters. That could come up there a little bit. So I would sand this back to the tape. And that should give me the line, or will give me the line that I want. Also, when I take the hood off and I have filler down inside here I do not know if I do not have the tape I do not know where that line you yeah you can have a good line when you take the tape when you pull the hood off and you got no tape but you can have a good line but then when you then when you start sanding inside where the hood is then you can end up buffing it back and, and making a mess again then you're back over in the filler and every time you go to that can it takes time so basically what I like to do is leave that tape on when I pull the hood off then I know where I can sand to and, and not be wrong. And Lord knows, I've been wrong before. And I think I've said that many times on the videos that we do. I learn from mistakes and uh, made a big one yesterday. Didn't accomplish a damn thing, it didn't. Other than make me look bad. And I can tell you why. Because I still haven't got the parts. <laughs> so, I, you know, I've made, a, made myself look bad for... for nothing. And that's the end of it. Now that's the end of it. of the hood right there. Got a little bit there to do. Now if I brought that hood up, like I said before, if I brought that hood up 
to fit the front right, it would be up here. Then I'd have to fill the whole length of fender to make it look right. And I wasn't going there, especially when I did the work on the front of the hood. Trying to get that fit there. We're not at the metal yet, so keep her coming, man. Keep her coming. We're almost at the metal. We're close. Perfect. There we go. We got her. We're just at the edge of the metal there, and we're just taking the, the low spot out of that flood. You can see it right there. comments uh, when the video played and there was somebody on there that said I would never do any dealings with Chad and you know what I hope you don't and the reason being is if you didn't give me my parts it would make me upset I hope you don't please if you're that kind of person please stay away from me <laughs> I'm not the person to I, I, I'm not yeah, please stay away from me. If you feel like you don't want to deal with me, um, I actually know who you are and you know who I am, so please stay away. I, I, oh uh, yeah, please stay away. Oh, thank you. I actually learned something from the ordeal, but I wish I had never went there. Alrighty, so that's basically, so now when I come up here, I do the exact same thing with the tape. I've got this tape pulled off there, got that looking good, and I just do the exact same thing all the way up with the edge of the hood, and the reason, and I know where to put the tape on because I've sanded all the filler off the edge of the hood. It's all metal on the edge of the hood. That's the line I'm going with, with the metal, so that's 
where I'm going to stay with the metal. Alrighty, you know what I'm saying. So that's basically it. Got some pinholes. I'll have to come back in and get those. I'll run some tape along there, get that. I will finish it off with an 80 get grit. We're ready to prime. I hope that you can accept me being wrong yesterday. I apologize to Doug for dragging him in. I want to apologize to Jolene for dragging her in. She knew better. And um, she told me that. She knew better. And I believe her. So, uh, yeah, come back tomorrow. We might be doing some prime and that sort of stuff. And um, have a great day, everybody. If you make a mistake, um, just try to remember it and recall it and don't do it again.